Some of you guys have been requesting solutions to harder Putnam problems, and this is me dipping my toes into the land above A3 and B3. So here we'll look at a solution to the 2012 exam problem B4. So let's look at the statement of the problem. So let's suppose that A0 is 1 and A n plus 1 equals A n plus e to the minus A n for n bigger than or equal to 0. So we've got this recursively defined sequence, but it's wildly nonlinear in its recursion because we've got this exponential function here. Now the question is, does the following limit exist and is it finite? So when that limit is, the limit is n goes to infinity of a n minus the natural log of n. So here are some hints. So the first thing you might want to do is consider a companion sequence. So that's b n equals e to the a n. So that's maybe motivated by this guy right here. Then you'll also um, arrive at e to the minus 1 over b n along that journey. And that might be something you have to look at. Next, you're going to expand something as a Taylor series to start a big chain of inequalities. And then an important step is to bound one part of the inequality, which contains a sum, by an integral. And so we know if we've got like a decreasing function, then uh, the Riemann sum with left-hand or right-hand endpoints is bigger than or less than the corresponding integral, kind of depending on what's going on. So that's kind of the thing that's going on here. And now a bonus is really to point out the fact that the world of continuous functions is a lot simpler than the world of sequences. Because if you compare this with a continuous version of this problem, it's actually quite easy. And that is if we take this guy and we move some things around, we'll get a n plus 1 minus a n is e to the minus a n. Now, think about that in its continuous version. We have this differential equation, y prime equals e to the minus y. But notice that's like a day one differential equation using separation of variables. You can get a closed form that's super nice and then look at a uh, corresponding limit on that closed form. Okay, so uh, maybe if you want to play around with this problem with with these hints, or maybe try this kind of easier continuous version, go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then we'll look at a full solution. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and look at the solution. So like I said in the hints, we want to set b in this companion sequence equal to e to the a n. So let's see what that does with our recursion. Notice that uh, b n plus 1 is going to be e to the a sub n plus 1, but that's equal to e to the a n um, plus e to the minus a n, and that's happening all in the exponent. But I can factor that out, so that's e to the a n times e to the e to the minus a n. But that is equal to b n times e to the 1 over e to the a n. Okay, great. But that's equal to b n times e to the 1 over b n. And there we've got our object, which was uh, also part of our hint. Great. So then now the next thing that we want to do is expand e to the 1 over b n using a Taylor series. So uh, let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So we'll have e to the 1 over b n equals, so that's going to be the sum k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times 1 over b sub n to the k power. Great. So that's expanded as a Taylor series, like I said. So now let's look at some terms of that. So the first term is equal to 1. The second term is equal to 1 over b sub n. And then I'm going to group the rest of the terms together. I have 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over b to the n squared, plus 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over b to the n cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. Great. But now, notice I can rewrite that as 1 plus 1 over b to the n plus 1 over b sub n quantity squared. And then maybe I'll write the rest of this as s sub n. So now maybe I'll go ahead and bring that up, um, save some of these other things, and we'll get to the next step.
So far we've defined this companion sequence b sub n, we got a recursion for our companion sequence, and then we took this part of the recursion and expanded it using a Taylor series like that. Now let's put these last two parts together, but that implies that b sub n plus 1 equals, so we're going to multiply b n on all of that, so that's going to give us b n plus 1 plus um, 1 over b n times s n. But now I'm going to put all of this together and I'm going to go ahead and write that as bn plus 1 plus r sub n. And now notice I know something about the size of r sub n as well. So let's notice that. So r sub n is definitely positive where this is less than some constant c over bn. And what is this constant c? Well, it's some sort of like supremum of all of these Sn's, which you can show that that is some well-defined number. I'll leave that to you guys. So we have this nice inequality right here. Now the next thing that I want to do is use this new recursion, which I'll underline this part of it and this part of it, to look at a couple of the values of the b sub n's to get a feel for how they go. So notice that b sub zero is e to the a0, but notice we know a0 is 1, so that's just e, and then b sub 1 is equal to b sub 0 plus 1 plus um, r sub 0. Great, so that's what we're taking right there. Good. But we know b sub 0 is e, so that is e plus 1 plus r sub 0. Okay, now let's look at b sub 2, so that's going to be b sub 1 plus 1 plus r1. But now putting this value of b1 in here, we can see that we get e plus 2 plus r0 plus r1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one more. Notice that b sub 3 is equal to b sub 2 plus 1 plus r2. But um, again, putting this value of b2 into here, we'll see that that is equal to e plus 3 plus r0 plus r1 plus r2. So now in general, we have the following formula. So b sub n is equal to e plus n plus the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of these r sub k's. Okay, good. And now this is going to be the form of our sequence that we're going to want to bound. So let's go ahead and bring that up and then we'll work on that. Okay, on the last board we got to this point. We've got bn equals e plus n plus the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of r sub k. And another thing that we know is that those r sub k's are all positive. So we know that this is bigger than or equal to e plus n, which tells us that uh, b sub n minus n is bigger than or equal to e, which is bigger than or equal to 0. But now dividing both sides of that inequality by n will give us the following. So we have 0 is less than or equal to b sub n minus n over n. But now using the value of bn up here, we see that that is equal to 1 over n times e plus the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of r sub k. But now the next thing that we want to do is we'll replace the r sub n's with this and we'll pick up another inequality. So that is going to be less than or equal to 1 over n times e plus the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of c over uh, b sub n. Okay, good. And again, that is from this inequality up here. Okay, and the next thing that we'll do is take this inequality, I'll re-index it so it looks like b sub k is bigger than or equal to k plus e, and then insert this into the b sub k's, which are in the denominator. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. This is less than or equal to 1 over n, e plus the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of c over k plus e. But notice that this guy is a special Riemann sum for a certain integral, and so let's go ahead and put that in there. So this is 1 over n and then e plus the integral from 0 to n of c over x plus e dx. Great. 
So again, this is a Riemann sum associated to that, but since this is a decreasing function, we know that the Riemann sum will give us a smaller value than the actual integral. But now we can take the integral of that, and that's going to give us 1 over n, and now we have e plus c times the natural log of x plus e evaluated from 0 to n. Great. But that is going to give us 1 over n, and now we have e plus um, c, and now the natural log of n plus e minus the natural log of e. But that's the same thing as 1 over n, and then now we have e plus c times the natural log of n. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and take that and bring it up here and see that we're almost done. Okay, we just did a long argument with inequalities to show that b sub n minus n over n is less than or equal to 1 over n times e plus c natural log of n. Great, so the next thing that I want to do is find the limit of this thing as n approaches infinity and apply that to the squeeze theorem to have the limit of this. So here we'll have the limit of um, e plus c natural log of n over n. So notice we can use L'Hopital's rule here. Uh, taking the derivative of this will give us 1 over n. This will give us 1. So that makes this limit equal to 0. So like I said, that thing is approaching 0. So what that tells us is that the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy is also 0. So b sub n minus n over n, that's also 0. But now notice that that implies that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over n equals 1 because we can rewrite this as b sub n over n minus 1. Great, and now we can put this back into terms of this a sub n limit in the following way. So that tells us that the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the a sub n over n equals 1. But now, since natural log is a continuous function, we can take the natural log of this and bring it inside, and that'll give us the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n minus the natural log of n. Here we use the natural log rule. Um, equals the natural log of 1, which is 0. Great which tells us that yes, this limit does exist, it is finite, in fact, it is equal to zero, which finishes the solution.